Welcome to my truck camper. Some of you guys might be following along with my truck camper build over on my RV channel. If not, head over there and subscribe. I will leave a link in the description down below for you. But I'm doing this one on the ham channel because I am building out a very small portable ham radio station that will go in the back of the truck. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use my FT-857D with this. That means radio and tuner as opposed to radio and amp and tuner or radio and amp with built-in tuner if I was going to use a QRP rig. And then I'll have my HT or I'll have my dual bander in the front of the truck for HT dual band type stuff. So I need to power this thing up and that means a battery. So I've got a 125 amp hour battery here from Power Queen. I've got to get it tested. I've got to make sure that it's got the right amount of capacity in it, prove that it works and then get it recharged. This new Power Queen battery right here comes with this Bluetooth control app on the phone. And I think these things are pretty cool because you get to see all kinds of data. Right now we're seeing zero watts in and we're seeing zero current and we're seeing a voltage of 13.5. Number one, cloudy overcast day. Number two, fully charged battery. That's this big green fuel gauge here, 100% SOC, state of charge. And so I've had this thing doing its state of charge thing for a couple of days now, and that leaves me at this balance stage here, and it tells me battery cells are being balanced for better performance, which is true, that's what they do. But I haven't seen it say battery cells are in balance, and I, I don't think that's actually going to be a thing that says you know, your battery cells are balanced, we're done. But the battery is in optimal working condition and the BMS is running smoothly. So cycle time's one, we're gonna up that cycle time. I wanna do a full drain on this and make sure I get the 125 amp hours of capacity out of this thing. So let's go do that. If you guys are new to the channel, I call this my wall of awesome. I've got a charge controller, which is plugged into two 400 watt solar panels on the roof, which are currently in shade. Thank you very much, mother nature. I usually have a battery of some kind sitting here to play with for test. I've got an inverter over here. I've got a little power distribution block in case I wanna do some power distribution type stuff or run something off of this system. And then this guy here with the fancy fan and the spinny lights type thing going on is an electronic load device. And what it does is it takes power out of the battery and turns it into heat in my room, which eh, kind of stinks sometimes. But while it's doing that, there is this whole measurement thing going on down here and it will tell me the capacity of the battery as it pulls power out. So I'm gonna change the pull power out setting to do 10 amps. On the nose. And then I'm gonna cable her all in and I'm gonna hit the go button. And one last thing before I hit the go button, there is this cable up here on top that runs to an external power supply that powers the lights and the fan and the computer on it. So it's not doing any type of like parasitic draw that's unaccounted for. All the power that comes out of the battery goes into heat in the room. Everything else comes off of a separate power supply. And now the rain has started, so it's a perfect time to start draining the battery. I'm gonna hit this start button. We're on and she's pulling out 12.9 volts and she's gonna hunt and peck for 10 amps all day long. But these are your battery power leads here and they come out and they go into the power leads that plug in there. And then this is the solar panel stuff. And we can just go ahead and disconnect that too. 12 and a half hours to go. 10 amps out, 125 amps. I think I can do that kind of math on camera. If not, let me know down below. It's been 12 and a half hours and we've got 129.47 amp hours out of this guy. So four more amp hours than it was really supposed to deliver. I think that makes this a good battery. Now we got to put it to a usability test. I have had this antenna mount on the front of the truck and this dual band antenna here for like the past three trucks and it's done pretty well. It's not actually the right match. You can kind of see it. It's got that lean to it, <laughs> but that's a factory lean at this point. This was meant for the late 90s Ford F-Series trucks and this is a 2024 F-Series truck, but it still fits. So why get something new? However, I guess to answer that question, that, that coax goes into the cab and I want something to go into the back of the truck, into the truck camper area. So my friend Paul, the Southern Ham, showed me this thing <laughs> and I didn't know it would come in what appears to be like a shoe bag or something. Look North Designs. And it's got a little cool antenna logo on it there. That's like way too zoomed in. I guess it just is what it is. But it's a uh, kind of an oval shaped compass with some terrain down below and a tower and a radio antenna. And then you can see the north 
So look north designs, pretty cool. But this, like I said, this looks kind of like a, like a gym shoe bag and it's got straps. You can wear it as a backpack if you wanted to, but as they say, it's what's inside that counts. Let me show you. Oh, that's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, it comes with coax too, rock on. Okay, so this is a suction mount. Look at that thing. That you can stick onto something and then it has this pump to get all the air out. And then this is adjustable, somewhat adjustable. You can, you can adjust the tilt on the antenna mount and it's a 3 8 24 there and an SO239 on the bottom. That's pretty cool. It's got a little cover on it to keep the, the dusties off when you take it off. But with how strong this is gonna be, I would assume you could run down the highway with it. Maybe they say something in the owner's manual. Get a little piece of coax with it. Let's see. Does it say 15 foot? Okay, so 15 foot section of coax there for you. Well, I guess that's what the ECCX15 stands for. Does it have any writing on it to say what? Nope, no writing on the coax. Oh, there it is, I was wrong. RG58U type coax, okay with the, the dual ends on it. So this will work perfectly for the 857 because this thing here has an SO239 on it and because the radio also has a matching SO239 on it. So that's a win. And then always check your instructions before you leave, which is kind of the purpose of this video. Honestly, what I'm doing is I'm getting the entire station set up while I'm still back at base camp so that when I leave and have no ability to come back here to get parts, I don't need to go to the store and get it. And I don't need to be without. So always set up your entire radio station before you go on a trip. Make sure you're not missing anything. Pro tip of the day. We need to make up a ground radial setup because I don't have a ground radial setup for this. I mean, I have, I have plenty I can adapt to it. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. You take this bolt here off and then you put a ring terminal on and then you are good to go with adapters. And I'm going to make one that's just yay long to come from that stud out to about here with a power pole connector on it. And then I'll attach my regular power pole radial system to it. So I can still leave this home when I go down the highway and not have to worry about dragging some big long radial system with me down the road. And they've got their own YouTube channel. So I will leave a link to that down below as well. Six month warranty, cleaning, sponge, lint-free cloth. That'll also let me rotate that. Okay, so that is a piece of cast aluminum that has then been powder coated or something. You can see the, the threads down in there. It's very high quality. And so like I was talking about, I have a little pigtail mount. And what I do is I take this wire here and I'm gonna put it on the ground system for the antenna. And then I can put whatever ground radial I want out of my many, many choices of ground radial systems that I have. So that goes back on there. And then that goes through there. Sure. After having this thing in person, now I can see why it costs as much as it does. It is a little bit pricey, but it is very high quality. We've got the suction mount, we've got the cast aluminum, we've got the antenna mount, the adapter, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good price after seeing it. I'm gonna go get it stuck on the truck. So I can put this kind of anywhere, but if I put it on the back of the truck, when the truck opens up, the antenna will be hitting directly in. These open up as well. So let me see how these open up. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have to disconnect the antenna no matter what. My other choice would be to stick it on the back window here and then I wouldn't have to do that. And I can just run the coax out of the wind door here over and up. That's not a bad idea either. But for this purpose, we'll just get it on the back side here. All right. Wow, yeah, that's not going anywhere. Nice. I could leave that on while I was driving if I wanted to. So that grounding bolt thing I showed, they have a optional six foot grounding strap, part number GD001. And they tell you 9 16th wrench, which is what I used. And then they tell you 20 foot pounds of torque. They give you torque specs for it. That's pretty sweet. So now we got the thing attached. I got to figure out how to remove it. Okay, so they say just grab at the edge here and give her a little tug and she comes right off. That's pretty good. 
Let's get her back on there because I still got to put an antenna up. And then for lightweight and ease of use, I'm going to use this gable carbon fiber antenna. And this is about 17 foot. And what I should do is I should get this thing to be vertical before I do this, but I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> there you go. Give me that takeoff angle. Give me that Nevis action that they keep talking about. Let me get that thing straightened up. And then you can see it here, the adjustment range. So I'll be able to loosen that one up a little bit, loosen that one, and then move it in. Stand back a bit here and take a look. And the truck is sitting a little crooked to begin with, but I'm gonna use this front antenna as a reference to the back antenna. They look pretty good, pretty close, close enough. And the reason why the truck is uneven is because one wheel is on the patio here and the other wheel is in the gravel. Does it say anything about driving with proper adhesion? Suction adhesion can last for days or even weeks depending on the smoothness and cleanness of the paint or glass. Caution, when using the travel antenna mount on a vehicle, a coax, ground strap, or other means of tethering to the mount should always be used as a safety precaution to ensure that if the suction cup should loose suction should lose suction or fail for any reason it will not become separated from the vehicle become lost or be a danger to others yep that makes perfect sense so the way i read that is that yes you can use this as it's going down the road have it tethered in case the suction comes off it's attached to the vehicle and will drag behind you instead of flip off into the distance and you lose it forever or impale somebody even worse if you're going to do that then i would suggest that you double check your suction make sure your surfaces are absolutely clean every time you go out down the road or anything. To me, this is more of a stationary mount antenna or mounted on a hotel window or apartment window or even the window on your house if you, you know, don't have any better way of getting an antenna up in the air or on a boat. This would be pretty cool on a boat. So looks like it's got a lot of usable functionality. Let's get that coax opened up. And then I've got my three, I think these are 10 meter radials and I can just attach them right there to that Anderson power pole connection. I bet that's triggering somebody right now, but this is not power, this is just radials and there's only one of them. And out of the back end, I get my, there's four wires, but one of them broke a while ago. And it's, it's like right here is the end of it. I mean, it still helps, but anyway, and then I can take these and I can spread them out in a couple of different directions going away from the truck and that's going to help pull my signal in one direction or another. This is kind of like a POTA performer because we've got the elevated vertical and then I've got the radials and the radials, I can get them explicitly tuned per band or I can fold them back or I can have multiple radials or I can do whatever I want to do. But this is one real quick, easy way to get some RF in that direction away from the truck. So I've got the Power Queen battery in the truck. It's hooked up to the winch up there in the front. I'm gonna to need to grab that battery and move it back here to the operating area, or I'll need to make myself a really long extension cord, or I'll just bring the coax inside and sit inside. And I think that's probably what I'll do. I think I'll sit inside. When this truck is in final camper configuration, I'll have a nice comfy place to sit inside, or I can sit at a folding chair back here at the tailgate or whatever the case may be. But for right now, I'm gonna get the battery hooked up up front and sit inside the truck and operate there. And then my radio storage system, I mean my FT-857. If you're on the other channel, you might've seen all the information about having this winch and why there's actually a winch in the back of the truck. Currently it's connected to this Power Queen battery that we just finished up the test on. And this is actually going to power the diesel heater and the winch and the radio station and anything else I might actually need to run back here, like my laptop or charging my cell phone or my watch or anything along those lines. And I don't have any power poles on the winch. The winch could use quite a lot of power and that's eight gauge wire. So this will be my first part into a power pole distribution system here. One of the nice features about this battery is that it has handles. So you need to make sure that your cables are routed inside the handle so you can still lift the handles up and use it. All right, out of my portable radio go kit, I need a radio. So there's the 857. I'll get that set up nice and neat up there. And then if I want to get on any band other than 20 meters, I need an antenna tuner. So we'll get that set up there next to the radio. And then I need microphone for some voice work. And I've got data stuff in here as well. And I need my power cord, which has my power pole connector on it. That's all plugged in. And then I will need power for my tuner. So I need a power pole distribution block and I need a coax jumper, which are two things that I don't have in this case. So 
This is why we plan ahead and practice before we go out. Got the coax jumper that I needed, and then I got a power pole distribution thing. My buddy Thump made this a while back, and I've got a video on how to build this and where to get all the parts for it, but it is one power pole in from the Power Queen battery, and then I have two outputs, so one out to the radio, one out to the tuner, and then a USB charger, so I can charge my phone with this, or I can power a Raspberry Pi, or I can do a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll leave a link for this in the description down below for you. Let's turn on the tuner. It's the ATU100 from N7DDC, and let's turn on the radio. What do we have? That's a FT8 frequency there. And we can hear ourselves some FT8. Let's get off frequency here and change modes. All right, nine to one. Run the tuner. 56 watts, that's what I've got it set to. Now it's time to do some POTA hunting. Let's get this over to Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Roger, roger, Kilo, Mike, Nine, Golf. You are 5-5, five, five, Arizona. Uh, you are 5-5, five, five, Arizona. 55, Arizona. This is Steve. How you doing? All right, well, I got you in the log. Thank you for the contact. 73, my friend, have a good activation. All right, and we have now proven that the station works. So I've got the gable antenna. It's a 17-foot-ish carbon fiber antenna. I've got an antenna tuner. I've got the radio. I've got the suction mount on the window. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Look North Designs. And I've got the Power Queen battery in here. And I've got the juice box. And I've got my 50 caliber ammo can go kit for the 857. So I think we're in business as far as radio goes. I'll have some links in the description down below for today's station and the equipment and stuff that I have shared in this video. And if you would like to follow along with the truck camper build, I have that over on the other channel. I will link that other channel in the description down there for you. Also, all in all, this is gonna be pretty slick. I got 125 amp hours. Next up, I have to test out the solar panel and the charge controller, which is all in that box. That's 400 watts of solar in that little box. So that's gonna be pretty impressive. And that's a, a portable zipper bag solar panel type deal and then you guys are definitely going to want to stick around for this one here from boxio that is a composting toilet for camping so lots of stuff coming out on the channel depending on how you interpret that phrase so be sure you're subscribed to see more stuff like that more battery reviews more radio reviews more antenna reviews all kinds of reviews and how to's and news when it comes to amateur radio type stuff so check out this video right over here thanks for being awesome i'll see you over there